Hello, everyone. I am here to talk about some ways to overcome depression. First, let me say, if you are having thoughts of suicide, please call 988 if you are in the United States. If you are not in the United States, you can look up the phone number for a suicide hotline where you live. Second, I am not a medical or mental health expert. I have had my own experiences and I am speaking only from those experiences. What works for some people may not work for others. I do think it will be helpful for many people, but please do not expect this video to be a cure for your emotional distress, but hopefully it helps. I recently heard Jim Carrey talk about depression. He said, The difference between depression and sadness, sadness is just, you know, from happenstance. Whatever happened or didn't happen for you, or, you know, grief or whatever it is. And depression is your body saying, F you, I don't want to be this character anymore. I don't want to hold up this, this avatar that you've created in the world. It's too much for me. This resonated with me because during my life I have had three very low points in my life when I was trying to be a person that I was not meant to be. The first time was when I was 23 years old. I was working 48 hours a week to survive on my own. I was going to school part-time and I had just gotten married to someone who was very codependent and, and clingy. During that time, I ended up in a psych ward of a hospital and was put on Prozac. When I made the decision to leave the marriage, it felt like a weight was lifted because I didn't have to be that person anymore. The second time was after I had been laid off from a job of eight years. A friend and I went into business for ourselves and being an introvert, I had to learn to be an extroverted salesperson to deal with clients and act as a salesperson. Oh, I loathed it. Sales is not my thing. And I once again found myself having to be a person that is not me. This got me on Zoloft. The third time was when I was still between jobs. I found myself in a situation where I could pick up and leave. I could go anywhere I wanted to. So I decided Atlanta, Georgia was the place to be. So I went. I tried doing some pro bono work for people that I was networking with just so I could get my foot in the door. Within nine months, I became the guy who would do free work. And my current wife had come from Singapore on a fiancé visa, which is only good for 90 days. So unfortunately, she was coming into an impoverished situation. Once again, I was flooded with stress of being a provider without even having solid work. Again, I had to be somebody that I am not. I moved back to Pittsburgh where I grew up and life started to get back on track. Those are my three stories. The commonality in each one is trying to be somebody that I was not meant to be. We are all here for a reason. What's your reason? And are you trying to be a person, faking a personality that doesn't come naturally to you? Now, people act a little differently at work or with friends than at home where people can just turn off, particularly introverts. I'm a different person when I'm at work because I'm interacting, I'm trying to please other co-workers or bosses. Uh, but when I come home and I turn off, I am really off. So let me talk about stress and anxiety and what the difference is, because uh, I think this is important. When people are under stress, they experience mental and physical symptoms such as irritability, easily angered, fatigue, muscle pain, digestive issues, and trouble sleeping. Some people don't eat, others overeat. Anything that is 
under stress will have some kind of consequence in an attempt to balance out. Anxiety, on the other hand, is defined by persistent excessive worries that don't go away, even in the absence of a stressor. So uh, people tend to dwell on negative things. I can remember sitting on a couch for a long time, stuck in a thought loop about why did this person disrespect me? And over and over again, I would relive a bad situation. So worrying is a waste of time and emotional energy on problems that don't even exist yet and possibly never will. Let me say that again. Worrying is wasting time and emotional energy on problems that don't exist yet and possibly never will. So what did I do to stop taking antidepressants? Actually, it was pretty simple and I wish I had learned it sooner. Basically, I am a spiritual being that has been locked inside the electrical nervous system of the body. I am a spiritual, energetic being trying to learn how to live as a human. Once I knew that, I started meditating and retraining my thought patterns. Now there are hundreds of different ways to meditate, and none of them are wrong, but some will work better than others because everyone is different. What I was introduced to was something called a sensing exercise, which is simply yoga nidra. Air is energy, so when you practice a kind of breathing meditation, you are inhaling energy and exhaling negative thoughts and energy. This is particularly helpful when you inhale and you hold your breath that has that new energy that you've brought in and let thoughts of love swirl around for a few seconds before exhaling, always in through the nose and out through the mouth. So I have a homework assignment for you. It is to do an internet search for different kinds of meditation and breathing exercises and find the one that works best for you. How long does it take to feel good again? Well, that's a difficult question to answer because again, everyone is different. So it could take two weeks or it could take six months. It's really hard to say. So just to recap, stop dwelling on negative thoughts. Determine if you are trying to be somebody that you are not. Then ask yourself, who is the personality that comes naturally to me? What's in my life that doesn't belong? Sit in the calm, retrain your thoughts. And again, if you are in emotional distress right now, call 988 if you are in the United States. I hope this information is of some help to you and pure love to you as you learn to go beyond yourself.